So what does a successor trustee first do, right? Somebody passes away, and you've got to have time to grieve. You know, there are things that need to be done and time limits on when it has to be done. But you can only do so much, and you, particularly during that initial period when you're grieving the loss of a, the loss of a loved one. Um, again, look to see whether the person who has passed away has made anatomical gifts, what the burial instructions are. Um, can those wishes be followed reasonably? You know, if, if I leave in my will, uh, I want to be cremated and I want my ashes to be thrown into a live volcano in Hawaii. Well, that may not be real reasonable for my trustee to you know, hike up that volcano and throw my ashes into it. So the trustee can make some decisions about what's reasonable and not reasonable, but generally is obligated to follow the explicit instructions in the trust. As trustee, you know, call somebody to help take care of, a, 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 of you. Call for help. You know, too often people get overwhelmed with all of the responsibilities that they have to then undertake uh, without calling in help. You know, during this is the worst period of time in their lives to have to do all the things they have to do. And that's why I think it's incumbent on us as the creators of these estate plans to make it as easy upon them as we can. You know, make those lists of assets. Make those lists of other advisors they can talk, contact. You know, let them know who they can reach out to to find the information that they need. We need to locate our assets. That successor trustee can begin slowly, gather that information, see if it's all in one place with the trust book, contact, as I said, the other advisors, the CPA, the financial advisor. Um, if possible, you know, work with the advisors that the trust maker had in place. You have the lawyer that created the estate plan, the CPA that has been doing their taxes for 20 years, you know, the financial advisor that has a trusted relationship with mom or dad. Because that's, those are the people that are going to know where things are and how things are supposed to work and, and certainly the tax consequences of doing anything. So the first deadline we have after someone has died in terms of being the successor trustee or the personal representative of the estate under a will is the deadline to open up a probate. Now if a probate is needed, right, I've really got a two-year period to open up that probate estate, but hopefully right, the estate plan has been created so that I don't have to go through probate. There's a trust in place that's funded with assets. The next most important deadline is the estate tax return has to be filed within nine months of the death of the person. But only if I otherwise have an estate taxable estate would I need to file an estate tax return except for this portability issue. So when Congress put the law into place that said a surviving spouse can use the unused estate tax exemption of the first to die spouse, it added a requirement that for the survivor to use that unused exemption, they had to file an estate tax return for the first to die spouse to show what the exemption amount is they're carrying forward. So let's say I've got a seven million dollar estate, right? I'm over the five million, but I'm not over the 10 million. I could still have everything go to the survivor's trust. I probably would not want to do that for the other reasons we talked about, the creditor protection, the remarriage protection in that family trust, but I could for estate tax purposes. But as the surviving spouse and trustee, I'm going to have to file an estate tax return to show that my spouse did not use their 5 million exemption and I'm carrying that forward to me so that I now have the $10 million exemption. So a requirement to use that portability is the filing of an estate tax return within that nine month period after death. Now if my estate's $3 million or $4 million and I'm not, I don't think it'll be over the five other than the risk I'm taking that the law might change and the exemption amount drop, uh, but if that's otherwise the case and I'm willing to accept that risk, I don't need to file an estate tax return. 
<laughs> or win the lottery. Yeah. Uh, if you get an extension to file the estate tax return, the ta but taxes are owed, they, they are still due within the nine months. You don't get to, just like paying your, your income tax, you know, I may file an extension to, to file my, my income tax return, but if I owe tax, it's still due on April 15th, and I'm gonna get charged interest and penalties if I don't file it, or don't pay the tax. Same is true with the estate tax. 